product and things that we are doing in Pocket Network and how, what is that approach that we are giving it from the design perspective. So first me, I'm Valeria Benitez Flores. I'm a design lead in Pocket Network. Um, everything that we... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you. So, um, with that warm welcome, let me tell you a bit. So, where, how did I get here and everything? Like, since day one, when Pavel, Luis, and Michael brought this idea, blockchain started to grow and start to understand the capacity and the size of the problem that we are trying to solve. Then it came to my hands um, the question how an industrial designer that is trained to build stuff. I was lear I, I studied to learn, uh, I studied to build uh, physical things, uh, how and I can approach the challenge of designing the most ethereal things that you can imagine right now in the space, blockchain. Experiences in the blockchain, interfaces in the blockchain, products in the blockchain. That's very different, but um, the good part is design has a root of understanding how human interact with certain elements that allowed us to introduce different experiences or different behaviors to the things that we interact with every day. So what was my approach? Designing, because what I do is design. What I know how to do is design. So the first thing is think about the user. Then that was my first um, approach to it. Oh, it's here. Think about the user, so how thinking about the user, thinking about the user as broad as how they interact, how they see what we present, how they feel it, how they identify, and how they actually uh, produce something out of what we, is, what we give to users. So uh, think about users is not only user journeys, but it's every point of contact that what we are creating gets to you as users, or co as community. So um, first starting was like how communicate this idea, how to bring this a magic idea, this uh, interesting project, very little people understand because engineers like to talk to engineers, but we have to communicate this to a broad audience, how to translate that complex matter into something that from investors to my mom, to the neighbor, or to somebody that you meet in a gathering just understand what is this about, because that's the challenge here, to get this into more person's um, understanding. Then um, you need to build a deck to communicate it. How to build a deck? There are a bunch of ideas. But you need something to start with that represents everything that you are trying to actually mobilize in user's perspective and understand what is your idea and what are you doing. So uh, it started, oh, okay. Instead of the C, it was saying their brand, right? So we start with a brand, building a logo. It seems a very uh, symbolic. You have to create a tiny identifier symbol that will carry a bunch of meaning through all the people that get in touch with it. So uh, studying, there are three steps from uh, my perspective and the way I think brands are built into bigger things. The first one is creating identity. Uh, here it is. So creating an identity is really building something that users can identify with. Something that y any of you as part of the community really approach. And creating a logo is an interesting process for anyone that has faced that challenge. You have a bunch of concepts, a bunch of things going into your mind from what you've learned, then you learn contrast, balance, emphasis, proportion, hierarchy, uh, white space, movement, variety, unity, all those are theories that we are brought to. Then you go to patterns and then you go to repetition and you start to create new versions of what you're trying to do, create repetition, some more repetition, more repetition, and happens and happens, and suddenly you put color, repetition, nothing good, until you find something that is pretty decent, that you say, okay, we can put that out in the world, probably it carries some meaning, we are trying to make a portal that transport the normal infrastructure to a new infrastructure, and we got to something different, but repetition happens, and we have to keep iterating. And we need to iterate because 
the business because the community and because the products iterate. This is not the same idea that was when that first very ugly, <laughs> how to say from my perspective right now happened. That's not the same idea we carry. By that time, we were talking about something different. But this time, we just start to talk to something uh, that carries more value and start to define the way users actually interpret what we were showing as a graphic. It started to get some tractions. It, it started to move some identity, that that we were trying to build. And then we got to what we know as POKT, like a shorter version, a cleaner version. Why this is nice? What this is looking better? What, uh, uh, why we are seeing it as a more elevated version of the process that we've gone through? It is mainly because of the second part that is happening that is called brand appropriation. Whatever more aesthetic, fantastic, good looking um, branding happens, it never gets to the second level if it doesn't get appropriation. And appropriation can come, of course, from the core team, from the people that work with it, but appropriation comes mostly from the persons that interact with it. Appropriation comes from the community. When the community actually find some identification, what we were presenting, not only as a logo, but as a business, as a brand, and as a global um, system of components that carry meaning, happens appropriation. We start to see people with the logo here and there. They use it in products. They use it in different places. Um, and that's the next step. What, what comes next, I keep clicking the wrong one. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> what comes uh, with, with, uh, with the appropriation is also building a system that represents the values that have been built around that specific, what do we call a logo, but what carries much more meaning because all of us identify right now POKT related to any of these products because what it carries, because something visual actually link us to something more, uh, something bigger. What comes like, what has happened with branding, and as I repeated, repetition, is a perpetual process. Branding is not a one side project. Br uh, branding does not come only from the company itself. It happens with the interaction from perspective. Who is the builder and who is the person that interacts with it actually make it happen and makes the magic. What will be the next step? We have seen institutionalization of brands all over the place. That's the next step. And that step does not come from who is presenting the brand, but who is really interacting with the product. Now is this nothing about what we are building, what we are presenting, or the aesthetics. It is that dynamic that is um, the dynamic that we are trying to encourage from the community to happen. Well, that we will get there, we hope so. We're building it. We are all here gathered around the same idea, around the same concept, and around building things around pocket. So why is this logo more inter most interesting than the previous one? Why this one seems to be more, um, trigger more emotions or have more people aligned with it? Um, then we go to something that is called the aesthetic, uh, aesthetic. <laughs> aesthetic. Any, any one of you maybe have been related to this uh, terminology? Aesthetic stands for um, the perception of an external world by the senses. So this is primarily the reason why we associate design with beautiful websites, with colors, with nice things, with alignment is because from the visual um, side of things, we get engaged in a different way with the products that we interact with. So why does it matter? Why do we care? Uh, we, work, we care because in the statics, that is the, um, the word that carries more of the value that we associate with what designers do, it satisfies a human necessity. And we all seek pleasure and we all seek visual pleasure then how this get links to what we are doing and how we interact with the products that we build. Then um, it cures because of the, uh, also when something important is like the aesthetics, get uh, those impressions that are, are be, start building engagement and real interaction with users. 
it takes very, very little for a person to make a decision of if an experience is pleaseful, is aesthetic enough, or if it is just a disruption of what they are finding enjoyable. So uh, beginning with aesthetics comes uh, the easy of use. How it is connected? Aesthetics uh, links us an open or interaction with different interfaces. Let's talk more directly to products. Digital products interacts with interfaces. We are directly connecting what we see as a floppy experience, as a plan experience, or as a product that is really reliable. So um, with, uh, the, with the aesthetics that we present, um, then it comes the usability. Um, there's something that we cannot unlink and probably will, will sound uh, contradictory because most of designers forever have this conversation about aesthetics versus uh, the functionality. But the reality that I believe in and the most of the industry is going through is that aesthetics is very um, linked to usability because it is a tool for it, because it's a way we approach things naturally and psychology psychologically. <laughs> so uh, then it comes the purpose. What is the purpose? Is the action for which a person, I think, is specifically fitted or used for which I think exists. What is the purpose? This is the, this is the behind of everything. And the, about the purpose, we have talked all along this, uh, these days is what is behind everything we are seeing is the technology. And then we are linking the aesthetics, that's an experience, that is a tool for the use, for the engagement and the usability that comes with the center point or the base of all the lines that is the usability. Having effectiveness, error tolerance, and easy, easy of learn and engagedness are parts, uh, key parts of the interaction that we require for having better products. Uh, then, summarizing all these points, we have uh, the three uh, key pillars that I just mentioned of building. We have function, that is the core, the initial. And that's not a discussion. We are all here, not because this looks amazing and it's triggering some emotions and it carries a lot, but because of functionality and what it does and how it connects to what we are trying to build. But then without the usability and the way we actually take those elements into building something new, we get nowhere. But the aesthetics is in the tip of it and all that we care and everything that we get in touch with gets some movement because of it. Um, then uh, I have a true belief that design should propose beyond aesthetics, it should be intentional it should be useful and it should conduct users to behave or interact in a better way. Everything that you've seen in Pocket, it has a meaning uh, visually, of course, and the, and the part of uh, the functional, you have to get deeper on that explanation. But everything that design touches uh, from Pocket, it has a meaning, it carries a value, and it is connected, if you notice or not, to some of the elements that we contemplate in our, in our ecosystem. So every time you see anything going out or any components that are looking great or good or bad, it could be misaligned, it could be out of place, but all of those are elements that truly carry a value and a meaning in the ecosystem graphically that we are building. Um, well, now there is the second challenge. We understand, we understand how products are built, how brands are built. Uh, we're in the journey to make it happen. But then comes the web tree. That is a very different space for designers. Designers, we have been invited to this space, and I say invited, is because we found the need of actually interacting with, uh, with the web tree. Um, as, as much as we need uh, very technical projects that solve a lot of uh, needs, we are humans, and humans are the ones that are really, really required to use these products. Um, there is one of the biggest challenge that I think we have is that we can definitely unlearn experiences. 
This is across any situation that you can imagine. You cannot unlearn experiences. And Web2 has brought to users an easy of use that is spectacular and that help us to get to the products that we interact every day. But the reality is like the Web3 have different uh, barriers and different challenges that, are, that put us in the position to reteach users or trying to bypass their cognitive load. The, the cognitive um, bias of the memory on the interactions with other products in the Web2, the learning uh, bias, because not everyone is willing to learn as most of the people here are willing to learn how products uh, work, and also the social uh, biases that really shape the way we approach new things as a, as a disruptive technology that we are building on. Um, then, uh, oh, it's a con oh, well, then I uh, think uh, this process of learning how to design in the web tree is always telling you like, this is not a way, this is another way, you gotta try another way, because we're constantly being challenged on how to build better, bigger, but we have the shade of an uh, of a industry that has taken uh, over 20, 30 years to be built, and we are pretty new. Of course, we have heard and we all have frustrations with the products and with the wallet and the things that don't work, uh, but that's part of designing for a startup that comes with a bunch of challenges from being a designer of a one-person team when engineers don't know, don't have uh, the intention to participate if this is good green or is good red, if it clicks good or not, then we start to trigger that part of the interaction and we see how the user's behavior change and how this is important, how this can be built in better places and we have more engineers that care about it and we have more engineers Enrique was my first design peer in the team. <laughs> and uh, then we have a broader team. I have Ceci and Dino that are part of the design team and they work on everything we touch, we see, and we interact with, with the product. Then uh, for me, it's also a personal challenge as a founder and as a person that is given the responsibility of create something for users that are very technical, that users that are really into how it works, rather how the experience that they are getting, that interact mostly with the CLI, that interact, uh, and the only way to get them to interfaces if is they are sleek, if they are producing actually great experiences. That will happen, it's in a startup, the speed, and the things requires uh, three elements that I've defined that are like the flexibility, the human experience, and the better uh, and, uh, and battle the ideal. So flexibility shows by itself. We have design applications, like we designed two applications, Banana Quest and Monster Chase in the early days to try to prove ourselves on our MVP. Then we switched to build a dashboard that was, was a version of the portal that you've seen today. It was so crappy, it was horrendous and it was super difficult to work with and we have so many limitations with the network and how to make it work, how to make it happen, so constraints, flexible. Let's keep iterating. Let's have the repetition because that's the key. Start over and be able to humble down and go on and go on and create new products. And also it requires uh, the battle of the ideal because um, people in my team know how much it cost me and cost most of the designers to see pixel misalignment. <laughs> things are not aligned, things are not in the place. And I'm behind, guys, let's make this work. Please, the size is not correct. That's a pain and that's a battle because the way we work is to make visuals look as better as we can, so we can produce all the points that are already explained behind it. The engagement, the usability, the, uh, the affordance, and everything that users get. But sometimes it just gets reduced to only the tiny little thing of the pixel is not aligned. 
It carries a bunch of things behind it, and it's a part of the frustration, it's a part of the learning on how to interact with dynamic teams, with small teams, with uh, constraints and the money and the timing, and it's part of designing for a startup. Um, this said, I want with more uh, background or how design is approached from my perspective, and from a pocket perspective, I want to share um, some principles that always have driven the work that we are doing, and I expect this to grow and get deeper and um, also um, define the places that we are going, because it is true that we are growing, that we have new people in the team, that you have new users, and we have a bigger community that really cares for what we are doing. So I will cover um, this. Uh, first of all, uh, it is the context. Uh, users come to, from very diverse contexts, and the users that we are trying to engage with, they're coming from very technical backgrounds to users that have no idea how most of the blockchain things work, that just click around things, and they make mistakes, and we are talking about money, we are talking about the first impressions that we give to users with an interface, if it is a slope, if it is slow, if it is grow, uh, growing, or whatever it means for users, they come from different contexts, they have different um, um, objectives to perform activities on the products that we are giving, so that is always crucial and that's always very important to have in mind, uh, the consistency. Uh, my team know that I always said, guys, consistency, consistency, we gotta keep it, because the only way you keep building a brand is to have consistency, to understand that the meaning of those little graphic elements carry a bunch of um, buildup in users' mind, and that's the way you are guys all around here and understand that the blue little thing that has some curves on it, you understand it as pocket. It's because of that, because it's the consistency that gets into users' mind and get us build a brand recognition. Uh, reliability, transparency, understanding how the process go, how, they, how the products really, really uh, function, and how we are building things to allow anyone to interact with the, with the web tree. We are going to have a super master software engineer that giving this a shortcut through a UI. And a final one, that is the affordance. Affordance is a concept, a very design-ish part, um, that is understanding how products work just by the interaction. That's the ultimate goal. And that's one of the principles that we have to pursue every time, is that users don't get challenged, but the users get conducted to a better experiences every time they interact what we are, where we, what we are doing. So, um, that's pretty much it. Designing a pocket network becomes uh, a challenge every day. It is exciting. It is fantastic. Um, it requires uh, a lot of the items that I mentioned, flexibility, understanding, and getting empathy with an ecosystem that is evolving every time, that is evolving at a very fast speed, and that we are learning on the go how to provide better solutions with the uh, products that the community is building and their solutions with what we are offering as an, a way of interaction with our project and the protocol. So thank you very much.